This is, uh, <clears throat> this is all I have left of the pictures. And these pictures are before, uh, before it went crazy. This was my family. And uh, if you look at the picture, you're like, wow, everything looks great. Are you sure that that's what your family was like, you know? Everything seemed pretty normal. Then at about the age of five, it was like chaos hit. My parents split up. Something was wrong in the family. Something, there was, something was going on. I didn't realize at that time that both of my parents, they were in their addiction and it was growing. And I didn't, I didn't understand that. It was like, you know, how come mom doesn't want to hold me anymore? How, how come dad never comes home? You know, what, what's going on? You know, I didn't, I just didn't understand, you know. My mother was a, um, was a groupie for the Hells Angels. And my uncle was a meth cook for the Hells Angels. And I can talk about this today because my uncle was murdered and my mother committed suicide. When my parents' addictions progressed so much to where they chose the drugs over anything else, I remember at age eight, my uncle would give us marijuana. At five, they would give me alcohol. At 11 was when they introduced me to methamphetamine for the first time, at 11. The mental abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, the trauma that I suffered was outrageous. I used to share with people I never, ever, ever wanted to do drugs. I was born and raised that way. I think when you look back at the families, that a lot of our individuals come from, the uh, level of, of violence, both in um, sexual abuse, uh, physical abuse, just a number of factors that come out of those homes that then contribute to the trauma that this person experiences going forward. When we think about the work of social work, we want to move upstream from being reactionary to being preventative. So if we can connect the social worker up front before a crisis becomes a crisis, a family will be better off in the long run. Traditional model of care has been piecemeal. Um, people come to us with a challenge and we try to take care of it. Um, but oftentimes we're missing sort of the larger story. And families often have um, challenges that are sort of either hidden or they haven't shared. I got in trouble, of course, and um, went to Juvenile Hall. Uh, there was a counselor there, and they started talking to me. Hey, man, you know, they wanted to know basically the lead up to it. And um, so I couldn't really get into it because I was afraid, honestly, that if I told everybody what was going on in my family, I'd be considered a snitch, and then my life could be in danger. That was the way I was raised. At 18 years old, they gave me some hefty charges, and they sent me to San Quentin um, and they gave me a 16 year sentence. Families are integrated in the sense that a change to one part of the family can make a change in the rest of the family. I was in jail on my way to go back to prison again and my dad showed up and he was clean and he was serious and he told me he was sorry. And then he asked me to please stop. He showed up to make amends in prison with me. And it planted a seed. Then I get in trouble with the meth again. My wife bails me out of jail. I get one night out of jail. CPS shows up at the door and takes my daughter from me. She was three. That was the toughest day of my life. Families are, are like us in that we're integrated people. And so because we're integrated people, we need integrated services. Riverside County is doing a lot of good work uh, in all of our different departments and all of our different programs to try and meet the needs of our 2.4 million residents. The challenge is that we're focused program by program, department by department, and what we need to do is move to where we're focused on the client. 
I hear most often that families have to navigate complex systems to get the services that they need. Starting out in my, on my journey of recovery, I was spread thin. You're gonna go to meetings over here with drug program, therapy this, and I was just like, I, I told my counselor at the time, I said, look, how, how can you do all of this and work? That piecemeal system was created for all the right intentions. Um, however, I, I think what's changing with general philosophy is that people are realizing that all these pieces are closely interconnected. My social worker for CPS at that time, well, she said, Stephen, we want you to go to Family Preservation Court. So um, I said, okay, that's fine. I'll just put this into the schedule. And she's like, no, I don't think you understand. This is all inclusive. So I go into Family Preservation Court and they're like, yes, this is your counselor, this is our therapist, this is our, I'm like, wait a minute, I mean, you know, we, I mean, wait a minute, what do you mean, this, you have, everything is here? And I'm like, yeah, Steven. We went from supervised visits to unsupervised visits, but when it was full reunification with my daughter, <laughs> we picked up our daughter, went to the court, and when they reunified us, and I was just like, I don't know, I, I didn't, I never wanted to let, I, you know what? I'm sorry, but uh, I'm a sucker for that girl. I can't help it. I never wanna let her, I'll never let her go. The goal of the Integrated Services Delivery System is to strengthen our prevention and early intervention services. Having these integrated services to help people like me develop this clear path was basically really what saved me in my recovery journey. I think what we're really excited about is this idea of one approach to serving and supporting our residents and families because we know that the things that help families and communities thrive are good for everyone.